First of all, can you talk to me a little bit about Philadelphia in stage two? You've got EQO starting with you, who helped you start really, really strong in your first three matches, but the Korean rosters these last few games have seemed to be uh, giving you a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So how has the team positively changed this stage, and where do you think the team lands in the current landscape? Mm. So we knew the meta going to be good for us, since there is no more Mercy, so we have Lucio mostly. And Neptune is pretty good at it, so we knew we were doing kinda well in the meta. We played well against Boston, we played well against Mayan, and then we meet the Korean teams, London, very strong. We, yeah, we got stomped, <laughs> nothing more to say, the outplayers. And then we play against Seoul. Um, I think we didn't play our game on this one, especially. We could have been able to beat them, but yeah, it was close and 4 0. -0. And today, yeah, we lost 3 1. It's unlucky because Boombox is sick today, so he hasn't been able to play. Uh, we didn't really scream at all with uh, Deathfly, so that's pretty unlucky. And yeah, I think we could have been able to win if we have played good and with the Good roster. Gotcha. Now, the teams that you have lost to this stage so far are considered being, you know, uh, three of the best teams in the league, which, you know, are a toss up no matter who you are when you play them. So, going forward, where do you see uh, your team going? Where do you see your team improving? And uh, are we, are we going to see a new fusion going forward from here on out? I think we can be the best team in the West. Yeah? Before the Koreans. The Koreans are going to be. For me, top three, and we can easily be the four. Excellent. So, how has having EQO in your starting lineup mm -hmm. affected the team's synergy and play style? Mm -hmm. So, EQO is more vocal than Shadow. He has a, a big, bigger hero pool as well. So that's nice, and yeah, he's, we 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 like to play with him because the dive works better. He has a different kind of play than Shadow. Gotcha. So, now, do you find this more kind of uh, aggressive diving play style uh, helps to set up your, your bombs well? I mean, does that? How do you personally feel about kind of adjusting to that play style? Mm -hmm. mm, personally, I I'm just gonna watch Huggy, Carpe, and Eco dive. If the if the enemy tanks gonna pill for them, I'm gonna dive with them. If not, I'm gonna just pill for my super and don't do anything. So with contenders coming up, people are curious about your uh, team, the, the main Philadelphia Fusion team's relationship with Fusion University. Do you guys interact at all, practice together, um, do any kind of like team building events or, or communication online? What is that relationship like? Uh, we don't do really anything with them, We're just on a Discord and chatting. But yeah, no, we don't scream against them, we don't, no, we don't do much. So I'm curious, uh, you know, you're playing on a, a patch in Overwatch League mm -hmm. that is a few patches behind the current casual patch or the you know the current main game patch. How has that affected your playing casually outside of practice and then coming back into practice the next day? Do you have a hard time kind of adjusting between the balance changes, playing on your off time versus playing in practice mm -hmm. or scrims? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The main changes, I think it's Somba, Somba hack. So yeah, no, I mean we don't really play a lot of summer on live, so I mean, it doesn't really matter for us. We just play competitive to train our mechanics mostly and to get warm up before the stream, so uh, we don't really care about that. Changing topics a little bit, in the new, you know, kind of in Overwatch League news lately, there's been a lot of discussion in light of the recent string of disciplinary actions about player behavior. So I'm curious as somebody who hasn't been faced with the you know, scandal or, or, or any of that stuff, how do you feel about your position as a professional Overwatch League player uh, with a heightened amount of influence and visibility? Mm -hmm. So we are representing our organization, Fusion, and also the League, and we have to do very, we have to be very careful about what we say on stream and in interview also. So yeah, I think it's pretty important for us to act like hope professional player. We can't say dumb shit. Do you feel any sense of personal responsibility knowing there are young and potentially impressionable children watching uh, something as, as big and grand as Overwatch League? Yeah, obviously. Sometimes on a stream there's a kid of 12, 13 years old watching and I try to not curse and not do stupid shit and I just want to be 
like the mother in the kind of way. Do you ever directly interact with people like this in your stream? And if so, what, what do those interactions look like? Do they come to you for advice in game or outside of game? Yeah, mostly outside the game. They're like, poker, I just want to become a pro player, what can I do? I'm like, okay, chill a bit. <laughs> just like to enjoy the game, keep studying behind, and yeah, maybe if one day you have the opportunity, go for it. So, speaking of being impressionable, like many people, I spent my Overwatch League tokens on Philadelphia Fusion Diva skin, hoping to kind of channel some of your spirit energy, land some, some nice bombs. So tell me, how do you go about landing the perfect bomb? Because I can't seem to do it. <laughs> so, it's mostly communication with the team and seeing the right moment to use it. So, you're going to ask your team to pressure the enemy team. So, like that, the monkey going to use his bubble. His bubble is the, the main cocktail of what you want. So you're gonna pressure the monkey, and then you're gonna wait to see the perfect moment. You're gonna throw your ultimate, mostly in corner or sometimes to zone, will be enough, no need to do kills. And yeah, your team just need to push with the bomb and the magic happens. Excellent. Hopefully I'll live up to the skin that I'm wearing on my Diva <laughs> soon, okay? So, uh, I mean, this is all old news though. Since stage one, people have been praising you for your, your diva bombs, but more recently, people have been uh, complimenting your photo bombing skills as well. <laughs> so, can you tell me a little bit about the hashtag Poco Bomb? Uh, what started it, and how do you feel about it and play into it? I love it. I mean, it started when. When did it start? It? Gosh, I, I was doing some dumb shit. Oh, yeah, in an interview about highest. I was like against the wall and <laughs> doing some weird shit like I usually do and yeah, I mean it's me, I love it. <laughs> you just go around standing in corners all the time? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have you seen a lot of other people doing the, the, the Poco Bomb? What, what's been some of your favorites that you've seen? Everywhere. They, those people in there walking, uh, they're walking on the bathroom, everywhere. It's insane. <laughs> So just to finish out, Philadelphia, you know, the, we've been said a hundred thousand times, has some of the craziest fans. Philadelphia's a crazy town. Uh, they've been with you through thick and thin, uh, through stage one and now stage two. Uh, do you have any words for the fans that have been sticking with you all this way? Uh, words of encouragement going into the rest of the stage? Yeah, guys, keep it up. Keep just keep supporting us for the defeat, for the victory. We love it. Um, yeah, thank you guys for following us. We're going to make you proud.